This is a demonstration of how drafted architectural can create a plan and elevation of a two-storey house. So we have an A2 1 to 50 sheet using millimetres as the units. Let's first draw the external wall of the ground floor. The settings in the dialog box are correct for our requirements so we can accept them. Our first corner point is here. Notice here how the ribbon changes to display a few options including the justification and external side. You need to make sure that these are set as required taking into account the drawing direction and whether you are inputting internal or external footprint dimensions. Now we can press the relevant arrow keys to define the direction of each wall, typing in the distance in each case. No need to type in the last distance, just type C to close the profile. OK, now let's zoom in to the extents and turn off the hatching for clarity. Now to add the internal walls. First, we need a block wall type. And we will snap the corner point here and select the perpendicular point opposite as the other wall end. Let's press escape and reselect the command to start drawing the next wall. This time we require right justification from this corner here to the perpendicular point opposite. Let's change the wall type to stud for the remainder of the walls on the ground floor. Now this wall is three and a half meters down from the top left internal corner. So we position over the point and when the snapped symbol turns red, we press the R key. This allows us to define a relative position from this point. We want to go straight down, so we press the down arrow key and enter the value in the box. Because we press the R key in the last step, XY is now the current input mode. So we can now press F7 to switch to snap mode and we can snap to the perpendicular point on this wall. OK, let's escape to start a new wall. Rather than clicking on the wall button again, we can press return or enter to repeat the last command. Use exactly the same process for the next wall. Press R to go relative and then the direction key, which is down again, enter the distance and switch to snap mode with F7. Let's just roll the mouse wheel to zoom in a little. Our next wall starts in line with this point but on the opposite side of the wall. If we press the Y key we can grab the Y value of this point. See the dotted line? So zoom extents we are now locked to that point horizontally so we can pick any other point on the other side of the wall to define the wall start point and we can pick this end point here. The other wall end is the perpendicular point here. Now we will start a new wall and set the justification to center as our last wall on the ground floor goes straight up from the exact midpoint here to the back wall. OK, that's the walls done. Let's add the doors. Before we do this, we will change the cursor increment to 25. The current door settings are correct for what we need, so we click OK. Again, we have a justification setting. Let's change it to left. Now, as we move the cursor along the wall, there are four dynamic dimensions displayed. One of these has larger text in brackets. This is our controlling dimension. You can change the controlling dimension by moving the cursor past the center line of the wall to change which side it's on. You then press the tab key to select which of the two dimensions on that side is to be used. 
This is the controlling dimension we want, so we can either slide along until the dimension shows the correct distance, or we can simply type it in. Watch the box appear by the cursor as soon as we start to type. Now we can move the door to the desired swing and hinge side and click into place. The next door is a double door. So we will change the type and the width. Zoom extents. Let's just roll the mouse wheel to zoom in a little. Again we move over the wall and position the door. This time we will slide the controlling dimension to 775. Click into place and set the swing. OK, next we need the same size door in this wall. Now set the controlling dimension by typing it in. This direct input can be quicker as you don't necessarily need to zoom in to achieve the correct position. The rest of the doors are in this area, so let's zoom in using Zoom Window. The rest of the doors are singles, so we can set this and the width to 8-10 millimetres. So place the door in the wall and set the controlling dimension and the swing. The rest of the doors are the same but with a 910 mm width. We need to press the tab key here to change the controlling dimension as we need the door to be 150 from the left end. The door command repeats using the current settings, so as the remaining doors are the same, we only need to change the justification as required and place each one. We know that you get the idea, so to save time, here is the plan with all of the doors in place. Inserting windows is just as easy as doors. First, we select the window type and dimensions. Our first window is at the exact centre of this wall, so we set centre justification and hit the F7 key and select the midpoint. The next window is 12-10mm wide. Let's zoom in a bit. We need to place it on this wall, 600mm from the external right corner. So we press Tab to flip the controlling dimensions and click into place. We can now continue, as with doors, placing the remaining windows. The process is the same every time. Set the dimensions, the justification and use dynamic dimensions or direct input to place in the wall. You can see the similarities between window and door insertion, so again, to save time, here is the plan with all of the windows in place. Staircases are also straightforward. Select the type, set the parameters and the justification. Then snap into place and set the rotation. Here we will snap to a point to align it to the wall, but we could also type in a rotation angle if we wish to. Now we can add a direction arrow for the Annotation commands are on the home ribbon. Here we have a leader arrow command. First we place the arrow head and then the other end of the arrow. To make it exactly vertical, we can hold down the shift key, which locks rotation to the nearest angle, divisible by 45 degrees. Let's add some text to the arrow. Select the text command, enter the required text in the window and click OK. The text is now attached to the cursor. You will notice that the ribbon allows us to change many of the text properties before we place it.